Titleist is the number one ball in golf. Yes, being number one is a number, and more players trust the Pro V1 or Pro V1X than all other golf balls combined. But being number one is more than a number. It's a mindset. It's a relentless mission to design and manufacture the best performing golf balls in the game. So you can chase whatever your number one is. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Cameron Smith. This is the one that I've always wanted to win since I was a little kid, so it just feels pretty amazing to be able to get it done today. Uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Golf Australia Magazine's Playing from the Tips, where it is once again major time with nearly all eyes of the golfing world on the 106th PGA Championship at Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm your host, Jimmy Manuel, and I will be attempting to guide our rabble of so-called experts as we take an in-depth look at the course, players to watch, and Australians in the field for the second men's major of the year, while we also take a look at and preview the LPG. Tour action for the week. First, this week he may sound more relaxed in his voice, in part because he recorded his first win of the year, but also because he's now got a hot tub at his house. Rod Murray, welcome. Yeah, indeed, and I'm drunk. So what a, <laughs> <trifecta>. <laughs> what a combination. Yeah, fantastic. What a week it's been. <laughs> exactly. Everything coming up, RJ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and next, they say a rising tide lifts all boats, and based off our improved tipping performance last week as a collective. Do we now call you, Adrian Logue, the tide? Oh, more like the anchor, I think. <laughs> well, <that's, laughs> it's the concept. Okay. Uh, okay. Given both intros mentioned the tipping results last week, we'll get them out of the way first. Both Rod and I tipped Rory McIlroy, so we added two wins alongside five more top tens, meaning we now have 11 victories in 2024 and 67 top tens, results that cannot be matched by a podcast tipping show recorded in Sydney on a Tuesday. I do want to mention that Rod brought me down with okay. his yeah, you did insistence voice this during the week, yes. on a tire Tidukun. Insistence? Yeah, insistence. I think I mentioned her. You talked her up considerably. I said, I said that And then she's just missed cut. Right, yeah. I, I went, it's the last time I'll be going with What do they say about players who blame caddies, Jimmy? Tradesmen blaming their tools? Yes. It's a bad look, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, it's a bad look. Anyway, my Who pulled the club? Yeah, you pulled the, the club. <laughs> you pulled the club and you swung it. I've learnt a, it's a valuable you. lesson. Good. From that. Just to ignore Murray. Yeah, yeah. Ignore yeah. Rob That's Murray. a pretty safe, <laughs> that's a pretty safe <laughs> bet for you anything in your to, life. Yeah. It's all gone wrong when you listen to it. <laughs> yes. Exactly. On last week, what stood out to everybody? There was obviously a fair bit of action. Rory winning again mm -hmm. at Bale Hollow. Uh, Roar's Matt, Alley. Roar's Alley. Is mm. that what we're calling it now? I don't know. No? Okay. Madeline Sagstrom and Rose Zhang at the LPJ lapping the field, but Rose Zhang getting over the line. Nelly didn't get her sixth win, but still played pretty well, which is pretty ominous for the rest of them going into another major, I'd say. There was plenty of chat about other things. Golf, what stood out? You have to like Blades Brown making the cut, don't you? Yeah. Made lots of headlines Absolutely. during the week. It was great to see there was some good coverage. I don't know. Is that a, you reckon this is deliberate by the PGA Tour? Sort of three teenagers Absolutely. in four weeks and Not then really sure. hyping. It's a lot of pressure to put on kids. You wonder about the responsibility of that as a strategy. But in terms of entertainment... Fantastic. And I thought he handled it brilliantly. You saw him signing the kids' autographs. Yep. Talking about how Spieth signed his. and yep. It's the stuff we never talk about in golf, but it's important stuff. So, yeah, good on him, and that was good to see. Good story. And Rory winning. Well, who doesn't want to see Rory being Rory? Yeah. It's just the most beautiful thing to watch. It was really, beautiful. really dominant. I don't think he'll, he has any clue how he got there, but <laughs> he did it. And I don't think he knows that he can repeat it. I don't know. We'll see. Don't get your hopes up, is what I think with Rory. But – the uh, the, uh, the LPGA, event, uh, the Founders Cup, was I thought incredible golf. Oh, um, should be a major, shouldn't it? That that those two out front just played so superbly, and and the rest of the field were pretty pretty mm. good. That wasn't a knock over that course, although they made it look so easy, especially the two out front. I can't believe that Sagstrom played so well and, and didn't you, win. You reckon you can't believe? It. Yeah, how do you think she's and, feeling? Yeah. <laughs> and Rose was uh, solid, but and did enough to stay in it, and then sort of put the foot down at the end there. She's unspectacularly really good, Rose. Yeah, the two wins yeah. we've seen. But there's nothing spectacular about anything she does. But mm. 
unlike Spieth, who's spectacular, but it's the same thing at the end of the round. You add them up and go, how did they shoot 65? Yeah. I was standing right there. That yeah. couldn't be possible. Well, yeah, they have. And wait, I think that's what Sagstrom ran into in, on that last round, where she's playing so good and just every time she's not gaining any ground yeah. going past or anything like that. Um, Sagstrom, I thought, also was so impressive that after all of that, she spoke, she did media, she hung around and mm-hmm. did all the right things. Just She's you know, class. Really She's good class. vibe out of it that, yeah. you know, means everyone will go karma. She deserves a win very soon, maybe something even bigger. But Look, it wasn't Dubbo, but she played a bottle <laughs> one, one year when she I did. covered it up there, <laughs> and she was fantastic. And clearly, she didn't play her best, but there was her and Ion Cho yep. who just clearly stood out as at least two pegs. Above. And she didn't win, but just watching those two, neither of them won, but you watch them and it's like, these are people who really know how to play the game at a level that – they're doing things you don't like Costanza in the car. I'm doing things here. You don't even know what I'm doing. You know? <laughs> Amazing driver. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, LPGA golf, though, is so healthy with those two players who we hadn't really talked about or hadn't been thinking about for the last couple of months just come out and totally dominate an event like that. And what a great time to have such so a great remarkable. Australian presence on what's yeah. going oh, yeah. to be possibly the most entertaining yeah. tour, it feels, Gabby, for the foreseeable future. Gabby, Gabby Ruffles with her best ever LPGA finish, finished, Steph finished Kiriaku, third. Finished well. And Minji was top 10. Yeah. It was yeah. it was exactly it. But re- an, awesome, an awesome kind of time to have a battle between two players like that on the end of Nelly's little dominant streak. Yeah. So it's not – just a bit of a nothing event at the end of it where the wind comes out of the sail. It was it really sort of lifted up. A rising tide lifted all boats. Oh, there, you there you go. go. It was logged. It was logged. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The whole right. LPGA is being logged. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's move on to the PGA Championship, which returns to Valhalla for a fourth time. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, of course, will resume his historic run of play. We've got a bit of an influx of live players, probably more than we've had in any of the other majors since it all kicked off after special invites. Fights. One of their own, Brooks Kepka, defends the title he won at Quail Hollow. Logie, you're going to tell us all about Valhalla, but worth noting, it might not be the best golf course, but it's winner history. Oh, the, the finish is there. Po- point, point of order, Brooks Kepka didn't win at Quail Hollow. Oh, I don't think he did it. Oak Hill. Oh, yeah, thank you. Which is also known Oak as Hill? Quail Hollow. Said Quail Hollow. Yeah. Okay. Point, just you know, a rare, a rare slip up. He won at Oak Hill in Ridgewood, New Jersey. I might that? edit that out for you, Jimmy. Okay. I might not. Depends whether you offer to buy me a coffee when we finish yeah, recording okay. or not. Uh, but yeah, Mark Brooks, Tiger, mm. Rory. You got Azinger's Ryder Cup. It's just, it's more the finishes, the theatre. It produces great theatre somehow. For yeah. great, all of those finishes have been memorable. You know, Kenny Perry in the booth while Mark Brooks makes the putt, and then he yep. goes to the playoff and loses. The Tiger and Bob May thing might have been the best and most explosive mm. nine holes of golf I've ever seen. That you know, that yep. year two thousand. Um, yeah, the Ryder Cup, as you say, was was a really Rory weird. finishing in the dark yeah. with being called with attitude up. as well. Yeah, with yeah. attitude, yeah. insisting on being called up. Yeah. Yeah, I know there was there was a whole controversy about that and whether it was just wanted to get it done. And, yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so great theatre is what it seems to produce. So is that down to the course or the players' logue? Uh, is, is, was that a segue? It was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was well engineered. Uh, yeah, mm. it's down to the players. I think they, we've seen we see that time and again that uh, you know you can have a great event at a at a course that isn't necessarily an architectural masterpiece. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's an interesting venue though. It's a good. Good tournament venue, good big event venue, isn't Purpose it? Built, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and a uh, little bit of uh, fact fact corner for you here. Valhalla means Hall of the Slain. It does in yeah. uh, Norse, ancient Norse, in mm. Old Norse. It was big, Log- big, big name in the uh, game Warhammer. You ever remember uh, Warhammer? Yeah, you yeah. painted your little yeah. things. Valhalla well, was big in there. I'm sure in that game they portrayed Valhalla in its uh, proper state. It's a celestial realm uh, in as a – it's a hall in uh, Asgard, which is – Asgard's a celestial realm. It's also known as Louisville, Kentucky. Um, <laughs> but it's a place where the Norse gods live. Very good. Um, and it's also a place of uh, near perpetual battle, pleasure, drink, and the Kentucky hot brown sandwich. What's a hot brown sandwich? I'm glad you asked. Yes, <laughs> the Kentucky hot brown sandwich uh, was created in 1926 by Fred K. Schmidt at the Brown Hotel in Louisville. Uh, and a traditional hot brown is an open faced sandwich loaded with roast turkey, lightly charred tomatoes, creamy Mornay sauce, crisp bacon, and melted cheese. And 
I've looked at some photos and it looks like thorough heart attack material. Look at it. I mean, <laughs> the, the listeners <laughs> can't see what I'm showing these Two ads, things. Will, yeah. you, will you be making a video about how to make one of those as you did with the I don't think so. The sandwiches from, uh, from Georgia? No, it, it looks absolutely like one of those is going to put you out of business for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, I can't personally wait till we get to the next major and we find out what the sandwich <laughs> significant is there because we've, we've now done the sandwich twice and uh, I'm pretty on board yeah, with this. Right. While we're in Kentucky, a shout out to our friend one bearded golfer, Dave Hill, who's oh, of from course. Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. He probably Kentucky knows his way around a hot brown sandwich. You probably do. <laughs> <laughs> That's, anyway, uh, Val is a Jack Nicholas course designed in the 80s. Uh, as Jimmy said, it's hosted three previous PGA championships. This will be the fourth <laughs> and two senior PGA championships as well. Did you mention that? No, I did not mention that. Uh, Hale Irwin. Hale Irwin won the Tom first Watson. One. Yep. The mm. KitchenAid senior PGA. One of my yes. favourite sponsors. <laughs> Don't know why. Yeah, no, fantastic. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Some memorable moments for yeah. KitchenAid was sponsoring that event. Yeah. And, of course, the 2008 uh, Ryder Cup. Um in 2021, so just a couple of years ago, Valhalla replaced its bent grass fairways. Just just pause on that for a moment. Bent grass fairways for Australians just sounds insane. It's insane. It sounds yeah. insane. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they replaced them uh, with Zoiza. Replacing um, fairways is what got me in that sense. Yeah. Pick up entire fairways <laughs> exactly. and change the yeah. grass. Like, wow. Um, and the Zoya, this was an environmental move. Uh, they made it requires less water and fewer chemicals and uh, plays much harder and faster. So we should see... Uh, the course play a little bit shorter, You'd have but that. the ball running into trouble, yeah. of which there's a lot. Yeah. Um, the course has been set up quite tough by the PGA Championships, uh, or the PGA's chief championship officer, Kerry Haig, who's yes. uh, renowned as being one of the best course set up guys mm-hmm. in the world. Which and it's means, acknowledged every year this week, and yep. it's never mentioned again for the yeah. rest of the year. I mean, I always take that to mean he doesn't do anything too that controversial. He doesn't upset the players. Yeah, yeah um, correct. If the players and like the setup, you've done something wrong. Exactly. Um, it's probably is that setting up the KitchenAid senior PJ. <laughs> it's of course it's distracted. Well. I mean, for, for mine, an even better course setup guy is somebody who you don't know the name of, who does mm, the, the open. Right. Every, I know who, who it is who does the open, but and, and a lot of listeners would, but it attracts a lot less attention. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's probably the, uh, the, the more admirable achievement. Each can, year, I, but. can I tell you, they did that 2021 resurfacing after they had a junior girls PGA. They, yeah. they have a junior boys and a junior girls PGA. Anna Davis won that one in 2021. Oh, really? And Akshay Batia won the boys one in 2019. Oh, is that right? Mm, there you go. A little bit of interesting stuff. Okay. That's good stuff that goes Anna on. Anna Davis on the left handed as well, isn't she? Yes, she yeah. is. Yeah. A couple of lefties. A couple of lefties. Ooh, that Logue's, change the picks. Logue's yeah. thinking yeah. about that now. Yeah. <laughs> and Phil, on, Phil went close last time there. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah true. I'm true. getting on Mike Weir. Wow, that's changes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this changes everything. A um, uh, few notable holes. The 13th uh, is a short par four. I think during this recent renovation as well, or in the last 10 years or so, they've redone all the greens. And this 13th is the island green. Uh, quite a memorable hole. I, I have vague memories of it from 2014, I, I think. Uh, but it's now, it's going to be quite dramatic. It's sort of sitting up on a little turret. It's a very small target. Mm. It's a short par four, really designed to be accepting a wedge. But um, we, you and I were talking about this, Rod, and we've got some vague memories of I, people going for yeah, this green. Yeah, not a lot, but I do remember a couple of guys having a crack at the yeah. green there. It's just, it looking is, at it now, it doesn't look possible. That I don't see how you could carry it onto that yeah. green and keep it on that green. Ooh, With a driver, yeah. it just doesn't seem feasible. Mm, like yeah. it's a Very small uh, island green, but quite a dramatic uh, fall off every, every side of it. It's like brick walls. It's like you're either on up. the green or you're not. It's a real binary yeah. proposition, isn't it? Built up like a turret of the Valhalla mm. castle. Um, the 18th is the famous split fairway. Um, we've seen a lot of drama in the past. Oh, and I should mention uh, Kerry Haig is, has talked about perhaps changing the tees around on one or two of the holes uh, from day to day. Uh, and the fourth is a notable one. It's a shortish par four, which you might make into a drivable par four. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a quirky, lastly for me on the, on the golf course, there's a quirky little Australian connection uh, to Valhalla. Um, local club here in Sydney, Pimble Golf Club, uh, had a member who joined Valhalla and managed to talk, swindle them into a sort of a reciprocal arrangement. I don't know if any Valhalla member has ever come and played Pimble, <laughs> but for a while there, <laughs> Pimble members were taking advantage of this and going across to Valhalla and playing 
a yearly event with the members against the members of Valhalla and set up a trophy, this plate, the Pinball yep. Valhalla plate, which was proudly on display in the trophy cabinet when the Ryder Cup was there. There was the Ryder Cup <laughs> in the tro- in the trophy cabinet of Valhalla, and the only other trophy there was the Pinball Plate. So there you go. <laughs> Just outstanding. That is outstanding. <laughs> that is Just that is a level that no other preview will cover <laughs> exactly this right. week of the PGA. That's exactly. And right. the people say it's all the same. Yeah, Everyone that's exactly does right. the same exactly. stuff. Yeah. You know, we got hot brown sandwiches in the Pimble Valhalla plate. Yeah. I never expected to end up there. Uh, neither did I. What a journey. Do you reckon do you reckon if you were, you know, ever fortunate enough to play in something like that and you won the Pimble Valhalla plate, you'd go down and get a hot brown and, and put it oh, on the, the only way to celebrate. Oh, just eat it off, off the, the plate. plate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. The only way to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, the PGA does always boast, well, it always has boasted what it called the strongest field in mm. major championship golf and all that sort of stuff. Rod, you've run your eye over this year's players and picked some standouts, but it's probably a free, pretty fair assessment. Yes, and to be honest, to be fair to them, it really is can claim to well that and the players could claim to be the two. Well, the players was always the strongest yeah. field in golf. Yeah, the, this is the strongest field in major. Why is it number four? What mistakes are they made? Let's not go into that. No. That's a whole can of worms. I mean, somebody's got to be the fourth of four, and it's the PGA clearly amongst the majors. But it's like they just get a couple of little things wrong. There's yep. just no differentiation. You know, it's U.S. Open light it's, or PGA Tour a heavy. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's it's like, what it is. It's yeah. this in between hybrid. Yeah. And I think the players like that. Uh, it was one of the th- oh, okay, so let's talk about the players. So obviously there's the big three this week. Everyone's going to talk about them. That's as it should be. And my goodness, wouldn't we all be pleased if that came to fruition Sunday afternoon? Mm. Scheffler, McElroy, Kepka. They've given oh, Jordan Jordan Rahm out. Well, those three won their last start. Won their yeah. last start. Yeah, yeah. One's the defending champion. One's one won the champion. Masters and yeah. one won so the most recent event of any if, if you got those three. Yeah. Going at it on Sunday afternoon, that would be a dream. Rarely happens in golf, obviously, yeah. but you would expect that two of the three will be there. That would be my expectation because they'll be keeping an eye on each other as well. So I mean, they're just playing too well. They're the best players in the highest rank because they're the best players when they yeah. play well. They're better than others. But golf doesn't work like that normally, as we know. So at this one, as we just discussed, you tend to get a lot of first-time winners, and it sounds derogatory, but it's not. Second-tier players. Yes, You've got the elite elite, the Rams and the DJs and the mm-hmm. Cam Smiths, and just under that you've got the Homers and the Fleetwoods and the the super talented players who can contend. And they they tend to do well in this event. So the Y Yangs, the Sean McKeels. Yeah, well, they're probably even a bit further. I'm talking I'm thinking about guys like Oberg, Shoffley. None of these people you'd be surprised to see them mm-hmm. in it. Oh, yeah. But you wouldn't necessarily pick them as a favourite at the start of the weekend, but those types of players tend to be quite confident with the sort of setup you're facing, particularly if they play the PGA Tour week in and week out. Mm. It's kind of just an amped up version. There's a comfort level there. And that's one of the reasons I think it makes it uh, so interesting. Here, it's probably not a surprise. It's such an American-centric winners list. So yes. 87 wins from 50 Americans combined. Next best on the list but by nationality. Next most number of wins in the PGA, Australia. I was going to say Australia with, yeah. With five. 87-5. So we're not out of the game mm. <laughs> completely. And five different winners, of course. Either. Kill Jim Ferrier. almost. Yeah. yeah, we've had a lot of almost. almost I mean, yeah. Norman was almost, Norman almost a few yeah. times. But yeah, so five. Ferrier, Jim Grady. Ferrier was, that's our first men's major. Absolutely. 1947. Something, I'm going to say. Yeah, good call. Wayne Grady, of course. David Graham, Steve Elkington, and the most recent one, Jason Day. They're the five. If you don't count Walter Travis, is, is he? No, he's, no he's, he's officially flags, the American okay. flag. He, right. he changed citizenship. So. Yeah. I just, he's... You, honourable mention. You, you can't, you can't shout, say, shout out to Walt. That's right. You can't <laughs> claim it's a good thing when Murdoch adopts American citizenship <laughs> and that Walter Travis should be Australian. It's a job lot, Logue. Right. Uh, <laughs> so the Australians will actually have some legitimate chances. I know you're going to do the Australians, yes. so I'll leave them aside. Except for to say about Jason Day, he was in with a chance here in 2014 mm. going into the final round. He slipped back a bit, but and I think mm-hmm. he's a player on the rise. So the names I'd be looking at are the likes of Zalatoris, Day's one of them, Max Homer. Yes. Ben Arn, guys who've just been creeping yep. along. Sung Jim like had another good week last week. That pool of players, I think, is where you might find a few su- – well, surprise is the wrong word, but a few guys stepping up, and I think Homer probably leads that kind of list. So my tip – I've got two tips. Okay. Because well, you've got three tips coming technically. Well, so. Scheffler, McElroy, and Kepka are all obviously a tip. They're everybody's tip. But if not, then I'm going to go with Max Homer. Okay, 
So if it's not one of them, put your I'm flag. The same thing. The this, no, 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 no. This is a new. I've what, instituted this recently. <laughs> I get to have two picks on the on the, the PGA Tour. It's Scheffler and McElroy, and then you get to have a pick because they're obviously a given pick. Nelly Corder on the LPGA, and then you have your pick. That's how I do it. But in the spreadsheet where I record the tips, there's only room there's for one, one name. name going down. You, well, you, you just. <laughs> You need to add a last one, which is I N, and then it's if not, and then you add the then. I'll go with Max Homer. Max Homer is who you're getting. That's, okay. that's how that yeah, works. Too. Now, Luke, give us give us your tip. I, Win a tip, I should say. Just the I, one. I respect use it, all of that analysis. <laughs> I respect the hustle. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's, it's Bo Hustler. <laughs> Bo, what, what it's are you a new Jack it? Hustler. New Jack, new Jack, Jack Hustler. Hustler. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, look, well, it's a. One thing about the course, which I think you've overlooked, mm-hmm. Rod, is that it's a big playing field. True. There's a big golf course good that call. suits, they will, are they? suits it's a it's player a with a big game. game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going with uh, Wyndham Clark yeah. again. It disappointed me a little bit last week. But that said, I think, like I said, Rory, another player with a big game, yeah. good uh, track record on this golf course, but I don't think he has a clue whether he can reproduce it again. And uh, again, I wouldn't. I don't think it bodes well that he played so well last week. He's a tough bet, Rory, isn't yeah. he? Because he disappoints so often because he's there so often. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so well, so I'm um, carrying Scheffler's going to be incredible. We know we know that, but uh, Wyndham Clark has the the guns. He can he can beat Scheffler on on his week. Agreed. He's one of the few not in not sort of intimidated or wondering how they can possibly beat this guy, isn't he? Yeah. It's. Damn I must it. say, in my little tip notes, I got little. Things about it's impossible to go past Kepka and Scheffler, but then I do actually make a declaration. I don't just say that means that I get them as my <laughs> overall thing because I think on, you're invited on board. You can jump <laughs> no, on board. No, I don't, if, if I don't believe in this. Kepka has got that mongrel back in him. He does as well now. He does. Uh, like. Wins last start, defends all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Majors is just a different sort of scenario. But you and this isn't saying. You don't know what he's doing on live. That's not what I'm saying here. You still, even though he's so good at majors, you still don't know which Brooks Kepka you're going to get at each major. Of course. He's just, you just can't quite read it. Um, Scheffler's form so good. Apparently, we said last week that I think he was either about to or had had the baby. I think that's correct, mm-hmm. according to Bob Harrig, who tweeted with the hashtag baby born. So, well, know, he was at the range, I think. Yesterday. Yeah, so he's there. That, so you would assume so that's all good, but um, I, I'm just I'm just going with Rory. I yeah. just last mm-hmm. week was so impressive. His wedge game showed up. That's why he won. Mm-hmm. His putting too has been off the charts. Yeah, good, but his wedge his wedge play is forever the let down. You know, putting might get more attention because it's easier to well, see what happens and everything like that. But his wedge game showed up. He had that real swagger about him. He was loving it. He's played here before and won here before. He's got that real little bit of anger inside, I think, about this whole thing that's happened yeah. with the policy board. It's just yep. driving him along. So I just think Rory's too hard to go past. And what a, that's a really good place. If we end the week with any of that combination of those three in contention and one of them wins, yep. I think we're in Absolutely. a good spot. Your golf ball is the most technologically advanced, or it's not. Your golf ball is either the most consistent, or it's not. It's the most trusted, or it's not. The fact is, it's either Titleist, the best performing golf ball in the world, or it's not. Prove it for yourself. Titleist, the number one ball in golf. What will you play? Just Jimmy, just before we move on, more broadly, there's been a lot of chatter about it that I've seen on Twitter. Do you read anything into the number of live players that have been invited to the PGA? Lots of people suggesting that, you know, the PGA have now set the blueprint for this is what the majors will do. They'll find a way to get live players in. I think it shows the – it reminds us probably of the – not division, but the fact that all four of the majors are run by different different organisations that are not the PGA Tour. Which I've always claimed as strengths. Yeah, I think so. But I think people – with the, because there's probably more people with a now vested interest in all of this mm. than has ever been before who probably don't, you know, the amount of times you see on social media or even if you go to, if I go out and people talk golf, they'll refer to the tour as the PGA. Mm. So they'll just see this title of this mm. tournament and assume it's that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think it's the PGA of America very much looking to maintain what their, their point of difference has been, the strength of the field. Um, and 
they filled it out in that way. Um, it'd be interesting to see. There's also quite a few, I mean, people like Lucas Herbert who've gone to live this year who you would have thought if he was playing the PGA Tour would get in on a yeah. world ranking base thing. So, and Just um, before you move on, do you read anything, Jimmy, into the – the sudden appearance of the Corbridge Financial Club. I program. was just about to discuss. <laughs> so we will. Our next tip that will other be other team yeah, league that's, right. that's, that's threatening everything. Our outsider tip will be next. So we may as well talk a little bit about the Corbridge Financial team, which I first saw on a media uh, press conference list and thought, "What's a Corbridge Financial team?" Mm. That is what the. PJ of America club pros are called in the field this week. It's genius, mate. Honestly, that is genius. It is market. really good. Somebody at the PGA needs a pat on the back for that to have to have managed to package that up as something and sell as well. Will they be wearing all the same uniforms? Do we know? I or? don't think so because they would all have different either sponsors or right. ambassadorships that they all have at a their logo. pro shops that they work out or their club. Blocky, you'll have a, a oh, the raft yeah, of stuff. Yeah, he'll have the block yeah. letter hat. Yeah. Cool bridge. <laughs> yeah, right up here. Well, and can I tell you that Corbridge? They believe everyone de- deserves financial security every day. We work hard to make it possible for more people to take action in their financial lives because action is the bridge from planning to outcomes, from today's financial needs to tomorrow's aspirations. What a word picture they've painted there. That Can took, I just say that unlike the basics. other sponsor watches that we run and we go, oh, that makes no sense. I really like that they've worked bridge in yeah. when their name is Corbridge. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. mm-hmm. like that, I didn't see core, though. That's synergy without mm. saying synergy. Yeah. Mm. Lazy, though. No Fine. core in there. Anyway. But Michael Block, of course, leads the PGA of America sort of names. Uh, he gets in off his finish last year where he had the hole in one with Rory in the group at Oak Hill. Uh, he also has actually won a couple of little sectional things and everything like that. There's some other names that people might – recognize Andy Svoboda, who's played a lot of tour golf. Um, no Omar Uresti. <laughs> the shotgun startled in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, but them and other players would be considered outsiders, so let's pick an outsider. Mm. Rod, do you want to pick the whole Corbridge financial team? And well, I, I, again, I've got a couple of picks. No, <laughs> really. At what point do you become an outsider? So this will probably be controversial. I, I'm going to say Ben Arn. I think he's an outsider. Yeah, that's right. yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take Ben Arn as an yeah. outsider. I, I think going to go a window I think he's got the, tips. a long putter now as well. <laughs> he does, which yeah. I think is a very good move. Yeah, so yeah. I was going to say Flores, Akshay yeah. Patia. Yeah. Famously, putts with a glass eye. Yeah, that's right. Glass <laughs> eyes. Glass Didn't eyes. he get his wedges stamped <laughs> after? That was yeah. a, wasn't Sam Harrop's first one, was it? Was, yeah, Finau was the first, but that's the one that kind of, okay, this guy's done two now and they're good. Yeah. He went and played golf with, mini off with Ben Arn in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Ben played a lot over here in Australia very soon. He terrific did. guy. Great so Sam Harrop, I've interviewed him. Yeah. yeah also a terrific guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ben Arn, yeah, I'll, I like that. Logue? Um, my outsider is, I think he's just cracked the top 50 in the world, but Austin Eckroat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I think yep. he fits that description PGA you just described, yeah. uh, Rod, the, that just next level. Yeah. Jake um, Knapp possibly too in that category. You might yeah, I, I I toyed with Jake Knapp, but I didn't know whether he was enough of an outsider. But I and my one may be borderline as well. Chris Kirk. Oh yeah, yeah, good pick. Okay, mm. I think he may have even played on that. Um, Right. Oh, he may done. No, he's not that old. Uh, but he won at Kapalua at the start of the year. Just accurate. That's what's going to win this week, guys. Who hit fairways, greens, and do that sort of stuff. And it doesn't he just strike you as a real PGA he winner? Does. Really does. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. Everything it's made total sense. The moment you said well, yeah. exactly yeah. right. Like Here's the mold, tip the liquid. Just in. the yeah. vibe. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So Chris Kirk for me. That's actually some of our best outsider tipping I think we've yeah. ever done. Just yeah. rolling on. Uh, as we mentioned, there is Australians and there are six of them in the field in alphabetical order. Cameron Davis, Jason Day, Lucas Herbert, Minwoo Lee, Adam Scott and Cameron Smith. Some genuine chances mm. realistically in that group. Three major winners in Day, Scott Smith. Davis was tied for fourth at the PGA last year, his best major finish. Herbert's made four cuts from five PGA starts, which is shows he's yep. sort of built for it. Yep. And Minwoo was 18th at Oak Hill last year. Everyone knows he kind of majors yeah. is going to be his thing. Um, 
in terms of lead in form beyond all those sort of things, Lucas hasn't yet had an outstanding week in live where he's really stood up on his own, but he's been part of those last two Ripper GC wins. Clearly enjoying himself, though, and that's when Lucas tends to play well, yep. when he's got that smile and he's yep. really having fun. Uh, Smith has found a fair bit of good golf recently, particularly at Singapore. Um, still, the driver looks like it's a work in progress. That'll be um, problematic here. And that's going to be it. And he's never struck as a guy who's going to play that well at PGA Championships. Uh, Davis was very good at Augusta for the first three days, but just kind of didn't go on with it. Um, so he will be looking to follow up his best major finish at this event last year. And then his best finish at Augusta in the last one. Um, Adam Scott, previous experience playing here, some decent form of late too. So Adam's not without a chance. And same goes for Jason Day, who looks a genuine mm. chance. Yeah. You know, Trending as a good finish last yeah. week. He and Adam yeah. both top 20s here last time in, mm-hmm. in 2014. He was tied fourth, I think, last week at Quail Hollow. Genuine. Big game genuine chance. Well. Yeah. Big game. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah. Yeah. And a PGA winner. Yeah. yeah. So who do we think is going to be the best of the Aussies? Rod, we'll go back to you again. I'm going to go with Cam Davis. I mean, Jason Day is the obvious pick and may well end up being the top Australian, but I just like Cameron Davis, and he just flies under the radar almost completely. He's so good at everything. His stats are – Justin Ray posted something a couple of years ago about, you know, you'll never pick who this player is, and gave him gave his position in all the stats across the board. And it was Cam Davis. He was like top 10 in, you know, three of five categories or something. He's just such a good player. He's not scared of the big moment. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, so I'm going to go with Davis. I don't, you know, I don't think he'd be the favourite amongst the Australians if you polled most people, but yeah. I think he's – Mm. Probably as good a chance as any of them are better than most. Good for this course. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Low? So, to be clear, for this to count as a win from a tipping perspective, it's just got to be the top Aussie. No. They don't have to win the tournament. No, they have to win the tournament. Oh, really? Oh, really? The top 10s count as a top 10, but this is just... Yep. Yeah, Someone this is a might social round, the category's mate. top Aussie. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but someone might here. be listening to this, looking to inform what they're going to do with how they consume the PGA if Championship you're that person, responsibly. Stop now. Well, that <laughs> bit of and call that's somebody. A, and that's a category a lot of markets offer. Well, this bit of information has. Uh, I'm with you here, Logan. Gone. I thought it was just <laughs> the best best finish. If they were tied thirtieth and none of the others made the cut, then you got the money. But mm. all right, well, I'm going for Jason Day in that case. Okay. Well, we'll review the. Results. I'll take it to the committee. I think there's a mix. I'll take it to the committee because there's a couple of people who are now available to sit on a committee who yeah. aren't on other golf committees around the world, and we'll discuss it. Mm-hmm. I am also going to go with Jason Day, but I think this is about as close to having all chances in the Australians yes. as we've had for a while. Yeah. Yep. It's not. There's not really good. There's not a standout yep. that's obvious. So. Yep. Jason Day for me as well. Uh, okay, there is other golf on this week, and so briefly we are going to look at the LPGA Touring, uh, LPGA Tour, which are playing the Mizuho Americas Open in New Jersey. Rod, tell us a little bit about it. Well, first you'd want to know about Mizuho, wouldn't you? Right, absolutely, I, I do. Them. So uh, they're a Japanese financial services conglomerate, and any time that you've created a conglomerate, you can be very pleased with your world. We don't have enough conglomerates, and so that's what you've well tipped done to them. a conglomerate at the PGA. <laughs> <laughs> well done. It, it's been Mori. Uh, according to their own PR, they offer award-winning strategic and creative solutions in corporate and investment banking, global markets, sales and trading, treasury, dot, 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 because I didn't actually click the link. That's just what was visible on the Google front. That's not all you needed to do. Yeah, I don't think there was anything going to be added beyond no. that. There would have been other words, but it hasn't added anything to you it. Don't need They're in money. Anything more. It's a bit of a shame this is this week in some ways. It is. Because Rose Zang defending, first professional tournament last year, beats Kennifer Cup coming to playoff, wins last week after a so-so 12 months in between. Could have been a bit like the Nelly story, could have kept something really going. It's going like every other golf event this week, including your local club, Connor. It'll be swamped by the PGA coverage, particularly with the Scheffler McElroy Kepka thing in the lid. So that's a bit of a shame. But it should be pretty good. This is played at Liberty National. It was Last year was the inaugural event, so it was yeah, the first one. Yes. So uh, this year was just the second. And really enjoyable last year too. Look, it really had a good vibe about it. Yeah. Again, a golf course, which is doesn't get any love from any of the architecture people and seems that it's easily pulled apart. But again, it seems to produce predominantly interesting finishes. Hosted yeah. the PGA Tour a few times, Liberty National. They yeah. always tend to be good. We almost got 
ended as a team, the President's Cup International in 2017. Was, it was almost over Saturday They nearly night. put the concept on a, on a barge that's exactly out to right. the water that's in New exactly Jersey right. and put it on fire. Uh, yeah. But again, in its own way, that's kind of an interesting result. You yeah, don't it's a dramatic look. Yeah, I think it pops on TV. It really cool. does. It looks fantastic, but the holes themselves aren't anything particularly yeah. interesting for I, the I remember part. Jeff Ogilvy saying he thought it actually was quite a fun course to play. Yeah, well, okay, we've seen a bunch of yeah. events there. Can anybody name any of the holes? Anybody got a picture no. of any of the golf holes? No. The only one I can think of is the 14th, which is the par three that has the Statue of Liberty in the background, and you remember it because it's got the Statue of Liberty in the background. That's all they talk about. I remember Rose hitting to a back right pin to an elevated-looking green on the 18th. 18th is a pretty yeah. pretty flat hole. It kind of yeah. bends yeah. a little bit to the right. Yeah. The green's offset it's a little bit. She hit a hybrid it's in there, yeah. so it's a medium-length par four. Yeah. Yeah. So look, the golf course, again, it's the fields that make the golf interesting. And then you'll get that this way. As we've said plenty of times, the LPGA in terms of week to week competition is at the moment is at least as compelling yeah. as anything else we're watching. The f- possible. amazing field again. I, and again, I, I had a conversation with someone in golf the other day who spoke exactly about that around just far more enjoying watching LPGA golf at the moment. The well, the competition's the, fabulous. The competition's just amazing. Everything about it yeah. is just really going well at the moment. You're a superstar, you've got. Yep. Such depth in the field. It's a massive opportunity for the LPGA this period, it feels like, particularly with the distractions at the mm, top of absolutely. men's golf, is that you've got a big pool of people there who love their golf who are finding that distasteful. They're looking for other golf. If you're not watching the LPGA, you're doing yourself a disservice. It really yep. is. It's a fantastic product. And again, nine of the world's top ten in the field this week. Lilia Vu is the only one missing. So you can't claim that on the PGA Tour too, too often. You know, it's only when the majors roll around. So it's one of the bigger purses outside the majors, so that probably helps that. And the fact that I think, I don't know whether they do this with the time, with the President's Cup, they stayed in New York and caught the ferry across to the course every day. Mm. That's how they were delivered to the course. I'm sure some of the players will be doing that. You can understand why the players might like it. New York, glitz, glamour, looking at the Statue of Liberty. Why wouldn't you? Um yeah, defending champion, obviously, is Rojang, and she'll be back to defend one last week in good form. Hasn't delivered, I suppose, in the past four months, what, a lot unfairly. Mm. I remember writing at the time, take it easy. You yeah. know, <laughs> this is not going to be easy for her. She's had a full back year. Back when you were a columnist. Back when I was a columnist, that's yeah. right, in the old days. Um, I think a year on the tour has really made a difference for Rojang. You would know this, Jimmy. It's one of the most difficult parts of the transition. It's nothing yeah. to do with the golf or the hitting of the shots or the holding the putts. It's just getting used to... What the nine to five of two a life? Like when you start yeah. a new job. That's know. what she said after. A yeah, we got to find yeah. out where Last stuff week, is. She was like, oh, it's a lot to adjust to. That's exactly Le- right. learning about hotels and yeah. transport and everything yeah. like that, yeah. and also which just sounds to silly, do it. but it ain't. It's not Australian. It's it's not that. It's much a distraction. Fun. And when you and when you're fresh out and you're young and you don't have a base necessarily. Grace Kim's one that still flabbergasts me a little bit that earlier this year she still doesn't have a base in America. That's tough. So she is really effectively hard. on the road for 10 months of the year, yeah. uh, and she does all of her own bookings and everything like that yeah. as well. I often wondered whether that played a role in Sue O not living up to her potential yet. She didn't have a base for quite a while mm. in the States. I think that's a really hard way to do it, particularly if you play the secondary tour where you're driving between yeah. tours and all that sort of stuff. So, look, anyway, all that aside, it'll nine of the top 10 players in the world. Uh, so you're going to get a good uh, you're going to get a good show. So again, uh, Australians with genuine chances. Gabby Ruffles, as you yeah. said, tied third, her best finish. But there's something about her. I know I've said this before, yeah. but she's got the look, the energy. Athletic that is a system. career. We are just watching yeah. a career <laughs> blossoming here, mm-hmm. and she, like Rojang, is really starting to learn that professional mm-hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. And once she settles in that, she's going to be a real force. Steph Kariaku played really well last week. We know what she's capable of if she can get there. Uh, in terms of a tip from me. Sneaky good Sunday for Lynn Grant last week. Yep. We haven't heard a lot of her lately. She shot 600, I think, on mm-hmm. Sunday. And for a player at that level, sometimes that's the switch. She's yep. found something, and I think she might have. And if she's found something, she's dangerous. So I'm going to tip Lynn Grant this week. Nice. Okay. All right. um, I'm picking Minji Lee. Let's go. She's, I mean, she's got to come good at some point this year. Yep. So yeah. Might as well be now. So awful. Yeah. <laughs> it's just terrible. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going to tip Minji Lee because I tipped oh. her last week and I'm going with this like – Shadowing me on a couple of picks. This yeah, week, I right? know. Oh, maybe that's the rising tide. <laughs> it's, you know, I, no, she was she was top 10 last week. She was 13th here last year and actually didn't play that well on the Sunday, went backwards a little bit when she had a chance. And I think 
she's really kind of, we spoke about last week, new clubs, new everything like that. Yeah. She's just working her way into a year, which Minji quite, quite often does, like takes her time and then plays a better golf in the sort of middle part of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a big chance here. Rose Zhang and Gabby Ruffles, of course, intrinsically linked having played each other in the final of the U.S. Women's Amateur yeah. mm-hmm. when they went to extra holes and Rose beat Gabby. Gabby missed a short putt. Yep, that's right. Yeah. And they played a lot against each other at college. Yeah. And then Rose got the jump and Gabby failed to file a Q school entry. And yes, that's right. Went to Epson tour. And I, I actually spoke to Gabby about it a little while ago and she spoke about how happy she is for Rose, but how she thinks her path to where she is now has been better for her because she hasn't had that adjustment. A lot of ways she doesn't fit the mould, Gabby Ruffles. Even the way she played, like her swing looks a little bit homespun and everything, but she gets the ball in the hole and just doesn't fit the mould. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And and good person Mm. kick. Yeah, she's really, all that side of it, she's really nailed. I've not encountered her any, I've never interviewed her or spoken to her, but you've done it a few times. You've always come away impressed, so that tells you something. Exactly. Uh, All right, that will do us for episode 63 and the PGA Championship preview. Rod, don't spend too much time in the hot tub and Kramer yourself. Is there such a thing as too much time in yeah, the hot tub, Yeah, he's having a Kramer. Kramer. The... Didn't he's an he have a sauna? I thought he had a sauna. No, he had a hot tub. He had a hot tub there. Mm. It was like Sweden in here. <laughs> <laughs> not, he, and he got too many BTUs and over, overshot the electricity in the building. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, Logue, I look forward to hearing next week about how you went making a hot brown. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. There's a there's a lot. Do of, a TikTok video. Do a lot of yeah, stuff. Do it. Get, no, do a TikTok around it. Can't yeah. I'm doing that. Matt Mollick is a big what noted sandwich want. guy. Is he? Yeah, Maybe listening. So Matt. Okay. Well, okay. Matt, let's Mollica, see. Over let's see you. a hot brown out of his. Somebody <laughs> produce a hot brown, please, and post <laughs> that, a picture on oh, Twitter that, or somewhere and tag us in it. Yeah. Yeah. Got, that yeah. sounds like a euphemism. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, follow right. along with all the action from the PGA Championship on the Golf Australia magazine website, golfaustralia.com.au. And get out this week as well with the June issue on sale on Thursday. Brooks Kepka is on the cover. Men's and Women's US Open previews, an exclusive interview with Gary Player where he particularly talks Australian golf, uh, as well as an in-depth look at Hannah Green's 2024 to date. Thank you for listening, and we will be back next week on Playing from the Tips.